let's say we're doing a scapular assessment here, and just preliminarily I'm just going to look at how the scapula moves. So if I put my hands on his scapula, inferior angles here, I'm going to get him to very slowly abduct. So, so the first thing I'm going to note when he abducts in, in scapula, so in his scapular line, is I'm going to note that I have no scapular setting. So I have no increase in, in the parascapular muscles holding that scapula set for the first 30 degrees before it comes out. I just see a winging of the scapula that occurs immediately, okay? So, <coughs> various things could be the problem here. Um, after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at his clavicular rotation. So my fingers are going behind his clavicle, and I'm going to get him to very slowly abduct as well. Bang. Right away, without delay, his clavicle starts to rotate posteriorly. So now we have posterior clavicular rotation, we have premature scapula protraction, and we have a person here who just by looking at him, his shoulders are kind of in an internally rotated position. He's kind of hunched forward. So if I get him to try to retract his scapula this way, there's a very small amount of mobility. Okay? In other words, he doesn't have a lot of scapular motion. When we get to this area, I'm going to talk a lot about the difference between scapular stability versus rigidity versus mobility. And mobility is something that people don't think about because stability is the the sexy term that everyone wants to use. But it's really, really important that your scapula are able to move. There's no sense stabilizing scapula that are stuck in the wrong position. So in his case, just by the way he has such limited scapular retraction, the fact that the scapula is wing out so quickly, the fact that he has posterior rotation, I can almost guarantee that he's going to have a problem with lumbar spine extension. Okay. Because in order to have good scapular setting ability and mobility of the scapula, you have to be able to segmentally extend your lumbar spine. Okay? Because what your lumbar spine does dictates what your upper body does. So when somebody has, let's say, an upper cross problem, you guys heard of upper cross problem, they have that, that hunched forward posture. <coughs> the first thing that I'm going to look at is the, what's going on at the lumbosacral junction. Because if you have a hunched forward posture, as soon as you correct lumbosacral junction mechanics, those, that posture begins to become normalized, so those shoulders begin to come back. If you do not have a good amount of uh, L5-S1 extension ability, you cannot correct your scapula. So if you hunch forward, you can't pull your scapula back and hope that that's going to make it normal. You can't do it. This scapular retraction and the extension of the lumbar spine has to occur at the same time. If I go ahead and feel his mobility or his, extens his ability to extend at his lumbosacral junction, I feel a, like a bent stick deformity. So in other words, I feel all of the extension is occurring from right here, which you can actually see. Try to emphasize it even more. You can actually see the extension occurring at that spot versus this flattening at his lumbosacral junction. So in other words, you're getting a hinge type extension at one spot and you're not getting an even distribution of lumbar extension throughout his lumbar spine. So if I were to kind of guess what is causing these problems or what was the origin and what was the result or vice versa, I would probably look here for number one, here for number two, and then his clavicle going off on number three. Did you feel any tension in his subclavius? A little bit. Okay, so if I felt tension in his subclavius, the aberrant tension in the subclavius could be um, a cause of his premature clavicular rotation or it could be the result of all this other problem. Okay, so he could be developing scar tissue in his subclavius. I would treat subclavius. I definitely would work on scapular mechanics, but one of the first things that I would try to correct is this inability or this lack of mobility in his lumbar spine, especially at his lower lumbar segments. Does that make sense? If I can get those lower lumbar segments, if I can get proper sacral nutation to occur, then you'll automatically start to see a, trans a translation of his shoulder blades. So you see, if I have bad posture here, Okay? If I just work on my sacrum itself, I can't help but correct my, 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 my mechanics here. But if I get him to extend just from here, I don't get any movement of his, of his scapula. I don't get that setting of the scapula. I just get a kind of generalized extension in his spine, which is occurring right at that spot. I would assume that maybe he doesn't have back pain. Maybe he does. If he did have back pain, I would probably be guessing that his thoracolumbar junction would be the problem. And if I were to palpate the multifidus, which we do in FAP spine, I probably would get a neurological tightening of his multifidi at the, the um, thoracolumbar junction because this segment is 
overly utilized. So you have an increased neural drive to that segment. 